Hi, welcome to this informational video about animal behaviors. After you're done watching this video, you'll be able to go outside and conduct a nature study um, about animal behaviors. You get to look for animal behaviors in birds. And I think between the video and between the activity, you're gonna have lots to tell everybody over dinner tonight about what you know about animal behaviors. My name is Miss Rachel. I'm the owner and lead teacher of Dragonfly Nature Programs, and I welcome you to this nature study designed for you at home. I was wondering, hmm, do we have any three-year-olds out there watching? Can you show me your three by giving me a thumbs up? All right, welcome. If you're four, can I get a touch to the nose? Good job, welcome. If you're five, can I get a high five? And if you're six or older, let's do a little wave. So welcome. Like I said, we are going to discuss what an animal behavior is. Animal behaviors are any actions taken by an animal. And they're done for lots and lots of different reasons. Um, one of the reasons is for communication. So um, what that means is being able to relay information from one animal to the next. And I'll give you some examples of that in a second. A second reason is for socialization and cooperation. That means having friends and working together. A third reason is for mating. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And then the fourth reason I'm going to give you today that animals will communicate is for defense or protection. So let's go all the way to the top and let's talk about communication. Different ways that we communicate as humans is we speak. And now I'm speaking English right now, which means if you don't speak English, you probably don't know what I'm saying. And there's lots of different languages out there. Spanish, Mandarin, Russian, American Sign Language. So there's lots and lots of ways that we can actually speak to each other. Animals can speak, kind of. They can growl, they can call, they can sing. And they aren't communicating information that way, but they also communicate through smelling each other. We've all seen that when dogs greet each other, um, ants laying down scents that other ants follow, and they can actually detect body language. So when um, an animal is looking upset or happy um, or ashamed, their body language changes. Think of a dog upset. He's going to have the hair stick up on his back. If he's ashamed, maybe his tail will be tucked under his rear legs there. So for socialization and cooperation, a lot of times animals have to work together in order to be able to survive in the wild because it's dangerous out there. So I think of a bird um, with a call signal to let other animals know that something dangerous is in the, in the area. And so not only do the birds hear it, but maybe the squirrels there hear it too. So cooperatively, all those animals can then go hide. Um, when I think of cooperating animals, I definitely think of honeybees. Wow, honeybees can have hives of up to, I don't know, maybe even more than 30,000 bees with one queen in charge. And everybody has a role to play, everybody has a job, and they just do it and they don't fight over it and they get the job done. They, they collect the pollen, they take care of the baby bees, they make the honey. It's pretty incredible. Honeybees are pretty incredible animals. Now, animal behaviors in relation to mating. Mating is when moms and dads, let's think of a mom penguin and dad penguin, make an egg together and take care of that egg until it hatches. And then when the egg hatches, um, they take care of the baby. So all those behaviors involved in finding a mate, finding a partner who will make that egg with you, but then also take care of that baby with you. That, those are mating behaviors. And those are fun to study also. The last behavior I wanna show you, or I'm sorry, the last behavior I want to talk about today is defensive or protection behaviors. So this could be, mm, let me think, a gorilla. When a gorilla wants to warn other gorillas, maybe of his family or maybe gorillas in the surrounding area that he's in charge, he's gonna pound on his chest and he's gonna make this big, huge sound and sound really big and really scary. And what he's saying is, don't mess with me. 
don't mess with me. I sound big, don't mess with me. And so it scares other animals off. I also think of howling wolves. Ho, ho, ho. And why would they be howling? They are definitely letting other wolf family knows. Hey, this area here, this is where my babies are. This is where my family is. This is where we hunt. This is where we live. So you need to find somewhere else to go. Um, so when you do your study, you're gonna be looking at bird behaviors. But before you do that, I have three special animals at home. Gemma is my sweet girl. She's my dog. And my two rabbits are Clover and Wren. And they are gonna show you some of their behaviors for you um, on the close of this video. So I hope you understand animal behaviors a little better. I hope you decide to watch animals, whether they're your pets or wild animals outside and learn about what they're doing and why they're doing it. Um, those are their behaviors. All right, thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful time watching birds. It's such a lovely thing to spend your time doing. Bye-bye. Here's Clover in the backyard, grooming. Rabbits actually keep themselves very clean. They don't even need baths. Everybody, this is Gemma. She's also grooming, but she still needs baths. Of course, eating is a really, really important animal behavior. Here's Wren eating some hay. And here's Gemma girl eating some kibble. The bunnies are always on the lookout for danger. Here's Wren on the lookout. When he feels relaxed, he starts to play. Here's Gemma always keeping guard. When the doorbell rings, she's right there to see who it is. Uh-oh, it looks like Clover's chewing up that cardboard. Actually, that's perfectly okay. Rabbits have to chew on hard things to stop their teeth from growing too long. So giving him cardboard to chew is perfectly okay. And here's Gemma chewing on a stick. This keeps her jaw strong and her teeth healthy, and so it's okay too. As long as she's not chewing on my shoes, I don't mind at all. <laughs>